and welcome to our channel where we help your real estate investments work harder for you. I'm Samantha from Elevate Realty in Toronto. In the past weeks, many news outlets have been reporting that Toronto is in bubble territory. So at first glance, this can seem pretty scary because everyone's talking about this. But when you look into this a little bit more, you'll see that they're all really just pointing to the same source, which is a report by Swiss investment bank UBS. So whether Toronto really is in a bubble comes down to whether UBS's bubble index is accurate. Now, without even diving into their analysis, it seems a bit off that UBS is saying that Toronto is the world's third biggest real estate bubble, only behind Munich and Frankfurt. They're basically saying we're in a bigger bubble compared to other cities like Hong Kong, New York, and LA, which to me seems pretty shocking. Because of this, I decided to really dig into their analysis to see what's going on. So in this video, I'll explain how UBS calculates their bubble index and more importantly, why it doesn't work well for Toronto. At the end of the day, if the UBS analysis is inaccurate, then you can't say Toronto is in a real estate bubble. Before I continue, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss other real estate investing videos like this from our Elevate team. UBS's bubble index is calculated by looking at five key factors right here. And when they're calculating these factors for Toronto, they're comparing how Toronto is right now to how Toronto was like in the past. Out of this list of five factors, the first two didn't raise any red flags, so I'll just breeze through them before I zoom into the three other factors. Number one, our construction to GDP ratio is very underwhelming and doesn't sound any housing bubble alarms from UBS. Toronto's been in a housing supply shortage for a while, so even though we're seeing more housing supply come onto the market now, we're essentially still playing catch up to our growth, so this isn't a big concern. Our city's strong growth means a growing GDP. So even though our property prices and effectively mortgages continue to go up, it's actually in line with our GDP growth. So UBS doesn't see a real estate bubble here either. Factors three and four have to do with price, and I have a similar argument for both. I'll go over each one separately and I'll start with the price to income ratio first. UBS is raising a first red flag for Toronto because they're seeing Toronto's price to income ratio get higher and higher over time. Now I'm just going to show you two charts. The left one is New York's price to income ratio over time and the right one is Toronto's price to income ratio over time as well. As you can see, New York's ratio does fluctuate around an average whereas Toronto's ratio has been heading upwards since the late 90s. I also want to let you know that these ratios aren't absolute values, but rather they are standardized, stacked against what's happened in the past so far. So say if our price to income ratio is higher compared to the past, the standardized value will raise a red flag. When you think about this, because we're reaching new highs every year compared to historical numbers, this ratio must have been calling a bubble in Toronto for the past 10 years. But of course, we know that Toronto's real estate has been growing steadily for the past 10 years. So just from this alone, I can say that this indicator hasn't been very reliable for Toronto. So what's wrong with using this as a bubble indicator? Well, if a city wasn't growing, then it would make sense to compare its current price to income ratio to how it's been doing in the past. But I'm proud to say that Toronto's seen a pretty big transformation over the past 20 years. In the late 90s, we were more of a typical North American middle class city. But over time, we've grown a lot and we're moving towards becoming a world class city. We are a national hub for both government and finance sectors in Canada. We're one of the biggest tech talent markets in North America. And recently, we've become the fastest growing urban center in North America as well. So since Toronto's moved to a higher class compared to before, it's a bit meaningless to still use our past as a comparison metric. You can also think about it this way. Let's say we're buying movie tickets. Over time, movie tickets do increase and you can use the price to income ratio to see if tickets are becoming overpriced. But if you've been buying regular tickets in the past and suddenly decide to shift to buying VIP tickets, you know, the ones where you can reserve reclined seats and you can sip on wine while watching a movie, then obviously the price should increase. So it doesn't make sense to compare the VIP price to what you've been paying in the past for regular seats. A more reasonable comparison is to either use the price history for VIP seats if you have this, or if you don't, you would find comparables based on VIP tickets elsewhere. 
In a similar way, because Toronto's upgraded in class, instead of comparing ourselves to our historical price to income ratio, it's more accurate to compare the price to income ratio of Toronto to other world class cities instead. And when you do this, you'll see that Toronto's ratio is pretty average versus other global cities. This means we're still very affordable on a global scale. And because our world status is still growing, we're probably going to see more hikes in property price as well. The next factor is also based on price and for this one UBS is giving Toronto a red flag because our price to rent ratio is getting higher and higher. So I'd have to use the same reasoning here, Toronto is moving up in class. You can see this because the price to rent ratio has been going up since the late 90s and we've yet to see a bubble. On a global scale, Toronto also sits in the middle in terms of the price to rent ratio, so nothing sticks out of the ordinary against other urban centers. Now, let's think about this a little bit more. If you're choosing a city to move to, Toronto would most likely be your top choice since it's a world-class city, it continues to grow, plus it's still affordable on a global scale. If you're an investor choosing a city to invest in, it's also a top choice. There's higher appreciation plus rent yields are also very attractive versus other global cities. If you look at the price to rent chart, you can see that the price is leveled in 2018 to 2019. This was when the government imposed a new non-resident speculation tax for the very reason to slow down real estate investments outside of Canada. But even with the new speculation tax, Toronto is still very attractive and demand isn't going away and you can see prices resuming its upward trend. The final factor that Toronto gets a big red flag for is the increasing city to country price ratio. What they're seeing is Toronto's prices are rising a lot faster than the rest of the country and I'm guessing the reason it's a red flag is because it's assuming that the economies of different parts of a country are somewhat similar. And if that's the case, people will move out of Toronto if it gets too expensive, but this assumption isn't accurate in Canada. The jobs are in Toronto and that's why people live here. Just because real estate is a lot cheaper, say in Calgary, people aren't just going to go move to Calgary because the same jobs aren't there. So I'll have to say that the city to country ratio isn't accurate either. Out of the five factors UBS uses, two of the factors don't indicate a bubble in Toronto. And unfortunately, you can't use the other three factors either because the assumptions they're based on aren't valid. This means UBS's index isn't accurate for Toronto, which also means you can't say Toronto is in a real estate bubble. What I can tell you is that COVID is affecting Toronto's real estate in the short term. We saw the real estate market freeze in early COVID because buyers and sellers were in lockdown and immigration has slowed down, which is affecting both rental and buyer demand, especially in the condo space. Right now, people want more space, so we're seeing even more condo supply flood the market, but this is benefiting the freehold space and freeholds are holding up very well with strong supports. Ultimately, Toronto's growing world-class status and its affordability on a global scale point to strength in Toronto's real estate prices, and this will just grow as COVID makes a full recovery. We're in the middle of a second wave in Toronto, so there's starting to be more fear again. If things pan out similar to what happened in the beginning of the first wave, we might see freeholds get a little bit less heated. This can give you another window of opportunity to get into a detached or semi-detached property at 5-10% to discounts compared to a normal market. If this sounds good to you, contact us and we'd be happy to show you the best properties on the market. You can reach us by going to the link I'll put in the description below. Finally, if you like this video, please remember to give us a thumbs up and help us out by sharing it on your social media and tag us at Elevate Realty CA. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.